ozone has been used to manipulate the flavour of spirits for about a century. Its best known proponent at the moment is Hans van Leeuwen, an Iowa engineering professor who launched an ozone purified brand of vodka in 2014. His is a two stage process of ozone exposure and then carbon filtration. When I first read about this, I thought it was snake oil. Ozone generators are widely sold as air fresheners, and I have tried them for that. A few years ago, I bought a second hand car that smelled strongly of cigarette smoke. I used an ozone generator to get rid of it. It worked, but only with a much higher output generator running for much longer than you'd think from reading the advertising. Eventually, I got around to trying it for vodka, and it worked for that too. Of all the methods of purifying vodka that I have tried, ozone is the least expensive, most convenient and most effective at cleaning up the taste. Ozone is O3, a molecule comprising three oxygen atoms. Common atmospheric oxygen is O2. O3 is one of the most powerful oxidising agents known. It is not stable and degrades in air with a half-life depending on conditions, but typically a few hours. If there is anything available to oxidise, ozone will do it. It is formed in the upper atmosphere from O2 by solar ultraviolet radiation. Lower down in the atmosphere, it's formed by ultraviolet and by lightning. Its concentration at sea level in outdoor atmosphere is about 20 to 30 parts per billion. But because it decays, it has a lower concentration indoors, and this is one of the reasons why outdoor air smells fresher than indoor. It cannot be kept for long, but it's easy to produce. It's formed by electric sparks that pass through the atmosphere. It can also be formed by artificial ultraviolet light, but inexpensive ozone generators use electrical discharge. This example cost me $10. Ozone attacks the double and triple carbon bonds in unsaturated organic chemicals. Carbon chains containing a double bond are broken by ozone into two chains, where the site of the carbon double bond is replaced by an oxygen atom on each resulting molecule. It also oxidises other taste-relevant chemicals like hydrogen sulphide to sulphur or sulphuric acid. The details of the chemistry aren't particularly relevant because most of the time the chemicals responsible for particular tastes and smells are not known. But by observation, ozone has the effect of reducing many odours, particularly of organic origin, and is often used to deodorise cars that have been used by tobacco smokers or dog owners, or buildings affected by undesirable smells. It's also used in a similar way to chlorine for swimming pools for disinfection. In high enough concentrations, it kills bacteria and viruses. It has a distinctive smell, and in high concentrations it can be irritant or toxic but little ozone generators like this that you buy online don't produce enough ozone to be toxic. When making vodka, you're trying to eliminate both heads and tails flavours. Tails flavours are eliminated by distilling to the azeotrope, but eliminating heads flavours is more difficult. They can be reduced with multiple distillation, or by using a fractionating column where the amount of headsy flavours appearing in the product is dependent on the temperature of the top of the column. I've investigated this from 66 to 74 degrees centigrade and the product is most headsy at the lower end of the temperature range. When I started investigating the effect of ozone, I used product from a single distillation with a low column top temperature of initially 66 degrees. Other YouTubers have also examined this issue of purifying spirit with ozone and in comparison to them I'm using a larger jar of spirits, a 5 litre demijohn, and a relatively low output ozone generator. I wasn't sure how long to run it for. I dropped the stone in and started pumping ozone and smelt the top of the bottle. It smelled of ozone but it wasn't particularly pungent. This is a bit subjective because I haven't done side-by-side -side comparisons of multiple bottles being ozonated at different stages in the process, but I had the impression that the ozone smell got more pungent as time passed, and from this I inferred that ozone was being consumed by oxidising chemicals in the spirit. As these chemicals became increasingly oxidised, more ozone was surviving to reach the neck of the bottle. So I used this smell test to assess when the process was completed. 
From early runs, I concluded it took about two hours, but subsequently I became a little less convinced that I could tell the difference from early to late in the run, and I now wonder if the change in the strength of ozone smell was in the mind rather than in the bottle. But I stuck with my two hour plus of ozone bubbling for treatment. Tasting gave a different result though, and this was done in parallel with my product made with a column top temperature of 66 degrees. It was pretty clear that the ozone treated product tasted cleaner. This was also true of products from runs with 67, 68, 69 and 70 degree column tops. For 71 and 72 degrees, I felt there probably was a difference but I wasn't so sure I could detect it repeatedly. For 73 and 74 degrees, I didn't have enough product to test in this way, at least not with the large 5 litre Demijohn, because the amount of product produced at those temperatures is pretty small. Van Leeuwen's methods first exposes the product to ozone and then filters it with carbon. I've tried carbon filtration and I've generally been disappointed with the results. I'll post a video on that in the future, but in brief I used the Brita system, which is a widely accessible and fairly easy to use form of carbon filtration. When used in isolation I didn't find it made much difference to vodka purity, however I took ozonated vodka that had originated with a 70 degree column top temperature and passed it through the Brita filter once, then compared the result with unfiltered ozonated vodka. When comparing the two glasses initially, I could not really tell them apart, but there was a definite difference on what I'm going to call incidental tasting, and the ozone filtered version was better than the ozone unfiltered version. By incidental tasting, I mean tasting without paying attention. A curious thing about psychology is that you're often more sensitive to sensory inputs if you're not concentrating. This may be because when you are concentrating on vodka tasting, you're focusing on particular flavours, making you less sensitive to other flavours. I'm sure you're familiar with the gorilla in the basketball game or other similar demonstrations in psychology. You are shown a basketball game with teams dressed in white and black. Before you see the video, you are asked to count the number of times the white team passes the ball. Then, at the end of the video, you are not asked how many times they passed the ball, but something else. Did you see the gorilla? You probably didn't, so you are shown the video again without the constraint of counting passes. This time it's quite obvious that a man in a dark gorilla costume wanders onto the stage, waves and wanders off again. And you missed it because you were deliberately distracted by focusing on answering the question you were expecting. I'm assuming a similar psychological mechanism is behind what I'm calling incidental tasting. This involves taking two samples of vodkas in different looking glasses so that you know which is which. But you don't deliberately taste them for comparison. Instead you go about your other tasks or evening entertainment, putting the two glasses on your desk and sipping them occasionally as you would another drink at times of relaxation. Doing this, you may notice differences between them, Probably not flavours you were previously looking for, but once you've noticed them, they're quite easy to tell apart. It was using incidental tasting that I noticed the difference between ozonated vodka that had been filtered versus unfiltered, just using one pass of a Brita filter. Single distillation with a 70 degree column top temperature, collecting 5 litres of product in a demijohn and ozonating it for 2 hours with this small ozone generator, then filtering the product once through a Brita filter gives a very good balance of vodka quality to cost and complication of production. If you are struggling to get good quality vodka, ozone is the first thing I would recommend to improve it because it's inexpensive, convenient and effective. Compared to other methods of product improvement, multiple distillation requires a lot of energy and also loss of productivity. If you use a 70 degree column top temperature you will lose 10% of run to heads for every distillation you make. If you do triple distillation this will amount to 27%. Carbon filtration is something I will discuss in another video, but the capital equipment and effort necessary to make it an effective carbon filter is substantial and also the activated charcoal is quite expensive in the quantities that you are going to need. Column top temperature is another option, but you really need to have a still built in the way that I have built mine to exploit that. 
and I don't know of any other moonshine stills that use my system. With ozone, you can simply buy an ozone generator from AliExpress, drop the stone into a demijohn of the acrid distillate from your last failed attempt, leave it bubbling and that's it. You're quite likely to have a product you would not be embarrassed to expose to public criticism.